when I talked about the select and mask dialog box, I kind of like just said it exists and I kind of showed you a few settings. But now I really want to talk about it because the best thing to use it for are selections of hair. And so I'm going to use it to eliminate the background in this image of this lady. And I'm going to replace the background with a solid color or a gradient and I'm going to modify it. And maybe I'm trying to create portraits for a website or something and I didn't want the, the distracting background. Hair is like the hardest thing to select. And when I was first learning Photoshop, you had to do all these processes manually. And so you'd have to like duplicate parts of her hair and then feather the edge and paste them on a new layers and then merge your layers together. In the updated and more recent version, like in the last five years or so of Photoshop, they have these options that will help you make these refinements super easy. You just have to get used to the settings and kind of what works and what doesn't work for your particular image. And so I would recommend the following. I know that it's a lot on the screen. I am going to read through it. But these are kind of good steps that will push you in the right direction. Because I don't want you to follow along and be able to replace the background in this lady's image and then have your own image and it not work. You need to have kind of a skill set that would, that would allow you to kind of troubleshoot and say, well, that's not working and this is why it's not working and I should try this other option. And so I recommend the following. Make a rough selection of the hair and anything you want to keep. And so in my example, I am going to make um, a selection of the lady and her bust and her arms and the, everything I want to keep in the image. Everything you see in the right hand side, I'm going to make a rough selection of. I am not that concerned if I get it right on the edges selection, so I'm probably going to use the lasso tool or the quick selection tool just to quickly make that selection. But don't forget you need to select everything. A lot of times students will try, or people in general, will try to select just the hair. And then they'll be really frustrated because they have this great selection of hair and then the person's face and their body are missing. Um, launch the select a mass dialog box to do your refinement. Don't even worry about refining it with the other selection tools because that's not what's best for this particular image. Uh, choose the view setting that you like. I like the on white or the on layers option. I'll show you that when we get there. You should experiment with the following settings. So brush the edges of your selection with the refine edge brush tool. Um, it helps with the fly, the flying wispy hairs um, that are kind of surrounding the lady's face. It does not work on solids. And so if I take a look at this, on the right hand side of her head, that brush is going to work and it's going to work really well. But on the left hand side, where I have kind of the hard edge to her hair, it's not going to work so well over there. But knowing that will help you be more successful moving forward. Because what it's going to do is it's going to try to get rid of the background color. And so when I wisp her blonde hair and I have um, beige or green behind it, it's going to say, i got to get rid of all that stuff, but keep the blonde hair. When you do it on the left-hand side, it doesn't really know what color it's supposed to, to remove because it's all solid color. And so weird things will happen. I'll show you what happens. You should increase the edge detection slightly and use the smart radius, and that will help when you're making these selections. I recommend feathering your selection, but only slightly. The more you, more you feather it, the more unrealistic a selection is going to look. I love the decontaminate colors option, and I highly recommend using it. It allows you to quickly kind of get rid of background colors, but sometimes it doesn't work for all images, so be flexible if you use it, and then weird things happen, just uncheck it. And then you can use the brush tool to paint back areas that have dispersed or disappeared, um, but you still want to use. And so you can kind of brush them back in. Last, you need to choose an output option before accepting your changes so that you know what's going to happen. And I like the Create Layer Mask Selection because that isolates your picture and it removes the background for you. If you export it or you, sorry, you output it as a selection, you have to do the rest of the work. But if you choose to make a layer mask, it will be done for you. And so you can see in this image, when I made my rough selection, um, I've zoomed in over here on the bottom of her hair. This is what my selection looked like when I made a rough selection using the quick selection tool. And it didn't do a great job up here. I still see like cabinet up there. Um, it just didn't work. But the first thing that I did was I took the, we'll go back to our, our list here. I took the refine edge brush tool, this option A, and I simply dragged across the edge of her hair and it automatically got rid of background color and you can see that the the you can see the strands of her hair. Now over here I didn't want to do that. Right? I have a hole here, I have a hole in her shirt, but it did help with the outside. I can always come back and paint this back in, but that outside edge is what's most important when you're doing like your first round of your editing because those wispies are going to make or break your selection. 
If you have wispies on your hair, people will think, wow, you did a great job making that selection. If you have hard, crisp edges around the edge of your, your shape, um, then you're going to get some flack about that. And uh, I'm a huge Real Salt Lake fan. And they had these pictures maybe two years ago of Kyle Beckerman, and they put him up on the Jumbotron, and he has dreadlocks. And whoever made their selection made really kind of non-refined selections, and his dreadlocks looked more like rope than, of, than like hair. And I would always kind of quietly to myself say, somebody needs to teach that person the refined edge dialog box. But I will say I'm very happy this, this, this semester. This season when I go to the games and I look at the Jumbotron, somebody has figured out this option and his dreadlocks are now have a smooth edge to them or a feathered edge and they kind of blend into the background um, much nicer, much more nicely. Okay, so then once you have made your changes, so I've gone through, I painted the edges, I did all those things that I said, um, you need to decide how you want to output the changes. And so the options are you can output it as a selection, a layer mask, a new layer, um, I went back, so I already edited this, and I've gone back in, and so now I can only choose to make a new layer, a new layer mask, etc. But what I would recommend is making it a selection or a layer mask. You could, I guess, make it a new layer, um, and that would be okay too. But you should know what's going to happen. As soon as I hit OK in this dialog box, I should know what to expect. And so I chose to create a new layer mask, not a new layer with layer mask, but a new layer mask. And you can see right here, my layer that I had selected has what's called a layer mask next to it, and we will learn about that. I swear, this I know this, this lecture is very long, but we will learn about it at the end of this lecture. And what it did was all the white area I got to keep and see, and you can see the lady, and all the black area has disappeared, and now I could edit that background. So what did I do is I added a color on the layers panel beneath the, the background copy layer. I just added a solid color layer, and it was purple. And so now I filled in the background with purple, and you can actually see that you can see all the different fine strands of her hair. And then maybe I didn't like that, so I changed it to be a gradient, and I put a gradient behind her. But the most important thing is I did the hard work, and I took the time to really refine the selection of the hair. So now whatever I put behind the, the lady in the image, I won't have to see weird white things like I saw in our Eiffel Tower image from earlier in the lecture. So the next video is going to pick up and I'll, I'll go step by step on how to do that uh, selection refinement for hair.